Nexus is a small zero dependency library for data-driven action dispatch in front-end applications. If you've ever worked with Reframe, a lot of what I'm going to show you will be familiar, but Nexus is much more narrowly focused and was designed specifically to work well with Replicant's event handlers as data feature. In this video, we'll implement a small counter UI and learn most of the Nexus API. This app's gonna use Replicant for rendering, Nexus for action dispatch, and for development insight, we'll use data specs. Now, the first thing we need to do is to set up an atom that keeps the application state. And this is also the first area where Nexus differs from Reframe, because Nexus does not want to own your state and only gives you tools to manage it for you. And we'll set up data specs to inspect the store so we can look at what's inside it at any time. And then we'll write a start function over here. And that should do it for our development setup. So this function will wire up the render loop, which we'll just do with add watch and then render some hiccup every time the application state changes. And like I said, we're using a replicant for that. We're going to do replicant.dom. And uh, we'll need an element to render inside. We can just use the body, pass in the element here. And then we'll call a function to produce some hiccup from our state. And we'll just start with a title, like so. And then I'm gonna cheat a little bit to get the kind of indentation that I like for this. There we go. And then we'll do one initial swap just to get the render loop started. And with that, we should have something of a UI. There we go. And over in DevTools, in data specs, we can see the app state. Perfect. Next up, we're gonna build out the rest of the UI and we'll start by making this text a little bit larger and we're gonna display the number and the button side by side. So I'm gonna use flex for that. Display the current value of the number and then of course a button to count it. That's what the almighty counter UI does. And there you go. If I click this button, not much happens. This is what Nexus is going to solve for us. So Replicant allows me to put arbitrary data in the event handler position. So we can use this to express some kind of action we want to have executed. And next up, we're just gonna implement the function that we want to have called when this happens. It will be a function that takes in the application state and the path that we passed in and just does update in in a swap. To give Nexus access to this implementation, we're going to create a map that has an effect. An effect in Nexus is something that updates your application state. In this case, it's called counter inc, and Nexus's signature for an effect takes an additional argument at the beginning here. Next up, we'll require nexus.core to dispatch the actions, and then we'll head down to the bootstrapping code and call replicant slash set dispatch to register the global event handler. It will receive the event handler data, which is actions that we can just pass to nexus slash dispatch, which takes the nexus definition, the application store, some map we'll discuss later, and finally the actions. And there you go, the counter is working. Next up, we're gonna add another input field to control the step size. Currently, we're just increasing with one at a time. We're gonna to want to make this configurable. So we'll add a label here for step size, put a gap on that, and then put in an input field, which will read the step from state. We're gonna to have to go and add that to the initial state as well, set it to one. And then uh, we'll make this a column and uh, put an input class on this field here. And we need to constrain the width of this label. And now it's looking a little bit better. We just get everything centered. There we go. This is what I want it to look like. Numbers one, two, three, four, great. We're gonna update this action now to add the step size instead of just increasing. And now the question is, how can we make this input field update the state? Because now we wanna save we want to set the step size, but to what? The value will not be available until the event triggers, but we can use a placeholder for this. 
And placeholders in Nexus start with a vector and have a keyword inside. I'll explain why the vector is there very shortly, but you can define a placeholder in the Nexus map under Nexus slash placeholders with the keyword as a key. And then it's a function that will receive something called dispatch data. And what is dispatch data? Well, that is the data you pass in when you dispatch the actions, this map down here. Turns out that Replicant already senses a perfect candidate for this, which contains the DOM event, which is what we need here. So we'll just destructure this to grab the DOM event. And now we can simply do DOM event target value to access the value of the input field that triggered the blur event. And then we can implement this effect as well. Set step size is going to once again receive the store and now the size. And then we'll do a swap. And this time we can just search in step size. Let's see what happens. So it updated the store, but it's a string because that's what the value of an input field is. Now we'll see why we put a vector around placeholders because placeholders can take arguments. So if we put parse number here and pass in the other placeholder, we will receive it in the placeholder function. So now we can do a parse long on it. And with this little tweak, updating the step size sets the step to a number. And then we can count. And it's going to count in our new preferred step size. The next problem to tackle is these multiple swaps. You really only want one or very few swaps in each app. So what I'm going to do now is to create a new, more generic effect called save that does the search in. And then we're going to try to express these two other effects in terms of that one. So here's the effect save. Nexus allows you to have higher level actions that map to lower level effects with pure functions that just take in the state and that can return other actions. That's what we're going to do here. We're just going to say that increment is just another way of saying effects save with these arguments. And in the same way, set step size is just another way to say effects slash save with these two arguments. Now for this work, we have to move the implementations out of the effect map and put them into Nexus slash actions. Those have a different contract in that they just receive the pure state. In order for Nexus to pass them the pure state, you have to give it a function called system to state, which takes your opaque system, the atom in our case, and turns it into an immutable state. And with this little change, the UI still works. And now most of our actions are pure functions. And the idea is that as your app grows, you'll just keep adding pure actions and have only a handful of these side affecting effects at the bottom. Next up, we have the action log. This is a built in view for data specs that can show you all the actions as they're flowing through your system. So to use it, you'll create a log like this. And then we'll install the inspector, which will add it to data specs. Then we'll also have to install the logger on the Nexus instance. And what this does is to install an interceptor that is called before and after your actions. And now you can see that when I click the UI, I can see all my actions on the side here. You can see the time they were dispatched. You can see the DOM event that triggered them. You can see the actions and the low level effects. And in this case, you can also see them. If we take a look here, you can see the original action with the placeholders and then the actual expansion with values and everything in it. So this is really useful. If you go into the event here, you can find the target. If you click the target, it'll take you over to the elements pane. So you can inspect the element that trigger the action. And really, this gives you a very nice overview of what's happening in your app. You can also see the state each action is working in context of. If we go into this one, you'll see here, this is the state at the time of this action triggered. 
and how it compares to the current snapshot of the state. Just to show you how this was really designed to work well with Replicant, you can just inline this on a, on a one-liner. And now this is all the wiring boilerplate you need to get an Nexus app up and running. Before I close this off, I'm going to show you the registry as well. So the registry allows you to uh, register effects, actions, and placeholders with some implicit state. So the good thing is that you don't need to manage the Nexus map on your own at a slight cost of having some implicit state. So this is a completely optional add-on on top, but it makes things a little bit more convenient. So if you don't need to have, if you don't need to very tightly control what implementations are available at runtime, this is probably the most convenient API for you to use. So then we're going to raise these and just do register placeholder for them. And we'll do the same with the number placeholder down here. And when we do this, we don't need to take the Nexus argument here. And we can call NXR slash dispatch, which does not take the Nexus map. Now, the development setup also becomes easier this way because when you use the registry, you can just do action log inspect and then it'll just register the interceptor that it uses to inspect things. So now your setup is very lean, very little boilerplate, a little bit of an implicit state, and now you have excellent setup for doing side affecting effects or pure actions. You have placeholders, you have development tooling, and all in this tiny package that I hope you enjoyed as much as we have enjoyed developing and using it ourselves.